Trust bullies are expensive deer, great genetics. She didn't jump a wall or anything and go in with the yearlings, did she? Try to replay the scenario bringing that group of deer up. And you put her in the holding cells? Yeah. Try to figure out exactly what oh, happened. If she's out here, she's in with 20-something yearling bucks, they would be running all over the place, unless they killed her. There's only two in here. I was out hunting another state. I actually got a phone call from Nate and said that they had one of the bigger bucks in the backwoods that was actually tangled in fence. So we need to get him out of there before he gets exhausted or snaps his neck. Doug's away from the farm, so I know we're going to have to handle this on our own. This is Doug Roberts. He's raised some of the largest typical whitetails in North America. His farm produces the best hunting scents in the world. His life's quest is 200-inch typical whitetails. This is Conquest 200. As I'm doing a perimeter check, I notice one of our nice 200-inch bucks is you know, running around, but he can't get away. So I took a closer look with my binoculars and noticed that he had a fence wrapped around his antlers. So the first thing I did was call Nate and say, hey, you know, get the tranquilizing gun ready to go, because we need to get him out of there before he gets exhausted or snaps his neck. Doug's away from the farm, so I know we're gonna have to handle this on our own. Going through my mental checklist of everything that we're gonna need to free this buck, Make sure we have all the medications we need for the dart gun. Hop in the mule and take off and try to get this buck tranquilized as soon as we possibly can just to reduce the stress level in him. I was out hunting uh, another state and actually got a phone call from Nate and said that they had one of the bigger bucks in the backwoods that was actually tangled in fence. And so he explained where it was and it, it was a piece of fence we kept up where a gate system had been. You're gonna have to dart the deer and cut it out of the fence. Got him. And then take that piece of fence down and, and just get the buck you know, back out where he has to be and wake him back up. With the big buck tranquilized, Talon and Nate ease back and allow the drugs to take effect. The medicine will act quickly, and in five to 10 minutes, the buck will be asleep. Out in Montana, Doug Roberts is starting his day. He is glassed and stocked within range of a mule deer and is preparing for the shot. Wow, that's a heck of a first day. And they said there's a big front coming in, so I had a funny feeling they're gonna about be out eating and feeding quite heavy tonight. I didn't expect to see him dogging like that though, so let's go get him, check him out. It takes a lot of pressure off me having Nate and Talon now understand how to handle the deer, handle the dart guns, and can take care of those problems uh, when I'm not on the farm. We went out there, uh, tranquilized him. It went smoothly, and um, you know he's back up on his way. Oh my goodness! Not as big as I thought. Love the shot. I love the forks. We got a four by four. Beautiful brow tines. Oh my goodness! Box. Look at the boxy nose. Awesome, awesome, awesome deer. 330 yard shot. But what's amazing out here is there's no trees, so the wind just whips through these hills and in, in these little gullies. So when we first started on this hunt, we put Evercomb and a stick on our boots and our pant legs, and uh, we actually have the stink stick hanging on our backpacks. And it's amazing how this scent will just mask your odor and allow you to kind of get into areas where the wind is circling and whipping and uh, allows you to take just awesome bucks like this. But ever combing a stick allows you to really get in and get a good shot. <laughs> the trip has been a success. Doug and good friend Dwayne Vate shoot mule deer with Dave Simons of Rock Creek Ranch Outfitters. Now it's back to the farm to prepare for one of the most significant days of the year, artificial insemination. When we artificially inseminate, or as we call it AI, when we're synchronizing those groups of does in the heat and they're in groups of breed pens, 
We bring him up during that day and then in the middle of the night, usually around 3 a.m., and we actually will pull the cedar and give them the shot that will synchronize them into heat. The synchronization process allows the does to be brought into heat for the day of artificial insemination. For the crew, this means a 3 a.m. work shift and moving deer in the dark. You know, you're half awake because you're not used to working in the middle of the night and also having to run deer on foot through the dark. You have to solely listen for hooves and breathing. It's a little eerie when you walk the deer into the barn at that time because it's pitch black, you have a flashlight in your hand, but there are up to 15 deer at a time that are coming and you can't really keep track of they're turning around, coming back toward you, things like that. It gets a little hectic. It's the middle of the night, and Doug Roberts and the Conquest employees are synchronizing does. This process starts 15 days earlier when each doe receives a cedar. The cedar fills the doe system with progesterone. Doug and the crew are now pulling the cedars and giving each doe a shot which allows the doe to cycle into heat. So the synchronization process for breeding artificially is we will put the cedar in and then 15 days later we'll actually pull that cedar out usually around 3 o'clock and it'll take about 3-4 hours. We do each individual group on the hour. Later we'll bring those groups back in in the same order and we'll artificially breed with, with the semen that we have chosen of the buck that we want that doe bred by. And that's where advanced deer genetics comes in and does that timing for those does to accept the semen and become pregnant. Synchronized cycle technology is the same way they use to make VS1, which is the collection process of the doe's vaginal secretions and her estrous urine taken at the peak of the doe cycle. The VS stands for vaginal secretion, and the 1 stands for estrous urine. VS1 is the most powerful whitetail attractant ever produced and is 100% pure, straight from Conquest Farm. You know, VS1 was how we started, by synchronizing our does through the breeding program. Ultimately, we are a breeding farm and it was the VS1 that really put us on the map. But Evercom has superseded that. You're just taking the real scents and smells of a deer. It's not an extra scent, so you're not offending at the wrong time of year. It's something you can use every time you're out in the woods. From the pouring to the cleaning, the inspecting, the storing, it comes into the next section where it gets packaged and shipped. You know, it still amazes me, the consumer, the hunter that buys our scent products and, and thinks we're a huge company. And in reality, it's, it comes down to a white-tailed deer and the products that we collect, putting all this together and shipping from our deer farm. When you see every package in here, it represents a hunter out there possibly getting the harvest of his lifetime and making his hunting dreams come true. So I look at every package with its possibilities and the blessing it'll be to maybe somebody out there. Hello. Mr. Hayes, good, good. What's going on, buddy? With The Scent Company, we sponsor a lot of the top TV shows, and so we've gotten to know a lot of the professional hunters over the years. Awesome, and, you're hitting the rut and Adam Hayes is one of them. He, he has shot monster bucks over the last number of years and uses our scent products. So I get this phone call from him the first of November, and he's on the road, and he goes, listen, I just got a trail cam of a Kansas buck. It's a monster. i got to have some products sent out. And I'm like, no problem. We'll get Evercom. We'll get VS1 sent out to you. And he's hunting in the rut period, so the combination of an ester scent and a deer smell, that's just a home run for us as far as a scent company because we know things are going to be done right. We know the products are effective, and he proves that it Make is. Make sure I get a picture as soon as you get it, and that means from the woods, buddy. Big buck. It's the big ten. He just came in.
Ready to pray? I am ready. Alrighty. Father in heaven, we come to you today and we thank you for another opportunity to serve you and to do your will. And I pray a hedge of protection and blessings around our children and our staff, around the animals on the farm that supply our income. I pray for the safety of the animals and the health. And I give this day back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It's November, which marks the breeding season in the Whitetail Woods. But on Conquest Deer Farm in Davison, Michigan, it marks a very significant day. The genetics that have been collected from world-class whitetails will be artificially inseminated into the farm's breeder does. This process is known on the farm as AI. With the first task of retrieving warm water, Doug Roberts helps the AI technicians with any last-minute requests. Nate is Doug's farm employee and has been working on the deer farm for the past year. He's off to move the first group of does from the holding stall and into the collection facility. You know, we have so many people that come to the farm and want to see the big bucks, but in reality, the does are actually more important to the genetic combinations than the bucks are. That's three so far. What I've done over the years is each year gets a specific colored tag to identify that birth date year. And it also tells me what the genetic background is of that doe. So by looking at the color of the tag, I can say, oh, that's the genetics I want for this year to breed, or no, I don't. The process of sorting deer in the facility can be hectic. Already they have a problem. Hey guys. Doug has discovered a doe is missing from the group, and the guys working the other side have no answers for Doug. There's only two in here. You know, you get really nervous. Try to backtrack the days. So we moved them the previous day. She didn't jump a wall or anything and go in with the yearlings, did she? Just try to replay the scenario bringing that group of deer up. That's pretty stressful. These are expensive deer, great genetics. What the team doesn't realize is that one of the stall gates was left open, and there's a deer loose in the facility. But every now and then you get one that just kind of gets excited or nervous and does something that you're not expecting. I'm looking at it going, oh my gosh, is this going to be this long of a day? How many you have? That'd be four more. Yeah. Be ten. Okay, they go out, we got ten and ten. What we're doing in the office, what Daniel's doing, is he's actually taking the frozen straw of semen out of the liquid nitrogen, and he puts it in a water bath that is at the exact body temperature of what the does are. And so it thaws it to that temperature and, and basically wakes up the, the sperm cells, and then they get all active. And then he puts it in what we call a gun. That's what we actually put down into the end of the cervix, and then we squeeze the end of it, and it pushes all the semen right into the cervix of the doe. We pull back out and the does actually bred. The semen's in there and it works its way into the, uh, into the track where all the eggs are. I'm not sure what I want you to do on this group, so I'm gonna go up to the house and get all my paperwork. Sure. Well, there's really a couple specific combinations that I wanted to do through the AI process. One was son of the gun daughters back to Hoosier. That's what created Conquest, and that was what we named the farm. We renamed everything after that buck, so I'm redoing that combination, but I also went back and took Son of the Gun himself, and I want to get some new baseline daughters, and then I can start building blocks off of him again. So he's been dead for, my goodness, 12, 14 years. Those two combinations are the building blocks that we're going to start with at this point and then build off over the next probably six, seven years. Here we go. With 48 does being artificially inseminated with the best whitetail genetics in North America, everything must go as planned. 
Nate has done this process numerous times with different groups of deer, but when you're artificially inseminating them, there's a level of urgency and tenseness that takes place. That's why I said I would help you with it with my foot. They're off to a rough start. With the doe not properly placed in between the squeezer, they're gonna have to let her down and try it again. Alan, we're gonna bring her back. The team begins round two. Waiting in the wing is the straw filled with active semen that must reach its target before it dies. No, back, back, back. She's through again. No, no, no. Go, 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 go! How do we keep her down on that end? Put the floor down. Put the floor up. Hit. Now stop a bit. Don't. Don't. You're always hoping that things go extremely smooth and well, but guaranteed with whitetails, it's not always going to happen. Finally, the AI technician can artificially inseminate the first doe. This is the moment Doug has been waiting for. This breeding is the history of our farm down the road. This is the genetics. This is, this is what's going to create and make us money and keep, us, keep our livelihood going. Okay. The doe has been bred, but there's one more step in Doug's process the collection of vaginal secretions. Vaginal secretions are the fluid that a doe makes when she comes into heat in the vaginal tract. It's extremely high in pheromones. But then you also have estrous urine. It's where her body has filled with these pheromones and the pheromones are also in the urine that create the scent trail that we as hunters are all looking for to attract those bucks to a specific spot and area. This is why VS1 and Evercom work so well. It's taking real scent from real deer and supplying hunters with a product that's effective and that shows results. Oh, on video, he didn't get 30 yards. It's really no surprise to me that I got the phone call from Adam a few days later that he got that monster buck. All I can say is that Evercom works like a charm because to have that many deer that close all morning long and this wind swirling around down here in this bottom, just can't get away with it smashed him at 10 yards on video, filming it myself. What a buck. What a deer. From death comes life. And on the deer farm, new life is just around the corner. When I put the combination of genetics together, the mother and the father, in my mind, I have a good idea of what should turn out and what I'm trying to change in the characteristics of the antler structure of those offspring. But it, in the end, it really comes down to mother nature. Do those combinations work? And then it takes time. It takes three, four years to see what you've done to really show the proof. And so you have to be very patient in this industry of farming deer because it takes time to see that structure come out of those little fonts. Hats off to the workers, to our team, because not only are they manufacturing and packaging premium scent products, but it all starts with the deer. And taking care of the deer and all the chores that have to be done on a daily basis. And then get back in the building and get your quota done for manufacturing as well. So we, we have a great team and, and they love what they do and they're passionate about it and it shows in their performance. You know, you walk up to a brand newborn fawn and you, you find out it's a little buck fawn and, and the first thing in my mind pops in is, this could be the next Conquest. <coughs> this could be bigger than Conquest himself. Stay tuned for scenes of next week's episode.
I've been doing this for 20 some years. I'm one of the old guys in the industry and uh, I still get nervous filling this stuff out wondering if we're gonna win or not. I'm gonna be entering Crusaders and Exeter's antler sheds for the typical three-year-old class. For more info and behind the scenes action, visit conquest200.com.